So this section is all about animal production. So basically this is about breeding animals or farming with animals and to ensure that the animals that you are farming with produce as much products as we possibly can cause them to create. Um, like say chickens should lay as much eggs as possible or become as fat as possible or put up, put up enough meat so we can sell them for meat. Same thing with pigs, we want them to gain weight to be able to sell them and with cattle the same thing, either producing enough milk to actually make a profit for the farmer or to make enough meat, have enough weight so it can be sold to the feedlot or um, to other farmers and so on. So the main thing is here about allowing the animals to be as big as possible, grow as much as possible, so that the farmer can make as much uh, money as possible. So there are two main types of production systems. So the first one is intensive and the second one is extensive. So as the pictures show here, the first one intensive production is literally the animals are usually contained inside um, a building or a house housing system of some kind where there are um, so many animals produced or allowed to grow and fed as possible. So in this case, we see um, uh, area where all these chicks are actually being fed and housed so everything about the space is being controlled that's why usually it's inside a building so they can control the temperature the amount of water the animals get the amount of feeding the animals get and also actually usually when they do this for adult chickens is to allow them to, well they kind of manipulate a little bit about the, the amount of sunlight the animals get or well, in this case artificial lighting the animals get because the more daylight there is, the more they eat. And for chickens, usually this means more eggs will be laying. In this case, for the chicks in the picture, it means they will eat more and they will grow more. So usually they manipulate the entire environment of these animals. So it's not really all that natural. But for production purposes, this is actually very good because the animals do grow more than normal chickens do who go to sleep at, I say, six o'clock, seven o'clock at night when there is no sun. Then the second one, extensive production systems, is usually the one we think about when we think of farms. There is natural felt everywhere for the animals to walk around naturally. They have their natural behavior. They decide when they want to go drink water, where they want to eat, when they want to eat, when they want to sleep. So basically with your extensive one, there's little human contact. So the animals can do what they need or what they want. And only when there's maybe a sick animal in the felt, the farmer will intervene and hopefully give antibiotics or medicine or medication or something to the animals to help them. So let's look at the comparison between the two, basically, which I just um, named. But the first thing, the intensive production system, animals are kept under high stocking densities. And we saw in the picture there, lots and lots of those animals kept in these housing facilities. The main problem though, which is stated there in parentheses, is diseases can spread very easily, unfortunately. So if there's one individual um, animal that's sick, usually the disease spreads very, very quickly because they're so close together. Usually this does not happen in an extensive um, production system, not so quickly. Second bullet there, no felt required. So again, if you don't have um, the space available or the felt available, you can do indoor housing. So it's actually, on a very, I want to say a small scale, but small scale in the sense of you don't need a lot of land to do it, but you do need a big indoor space depending on the amount of animals you want to house. Then thirdly, the environment is controlled, like I mentioned, usually they do temperature control, control the amount of feed the animals get, the water they get, everything. So everything is controlled for the animal. Then fourthly, uh, they are fed balanced rations to increase their production or, um, or their growth. So everything is monitored about this animal. Then lastly, close human supervision is usually needed. As you saw in the picture, there was a guy walking around monitoring his chickens to see whether they're all right, none, no diseases um, in the surrounding area and so on. But this does mean that is very labor intensive. So you do need workers to help or the farmer himself must take a close look at all the animals. So some examples is usually your battery systems, like your battery chickens. So they're kept in close quarters to one another, but you can hold a lot of them. Then feedlots for cattle usually, and you get these units, um, usually called piggeries, where the pigs are held. So in small cages, I think I have a picture in one of the other slides, that we can see these units where the pigs are allowed to stay, well, they're not, they can't really move much, 
but that is to enable their piglets to actually keep on drinking from them and they also fed a lot of um, feed and nutrients the sows and so on so that they produce a lot of milk for the piglets and then your extensive production system this will always depends on natural felt so you do need the area or the surrounding environment to feed your animals so only sometimes in parentheses it says mineral licks could be required so if the felt does not have enough nutrients if it's sour felt or something's wrong with the environment it's possible that the farmer will have to give additional feeding to the animals but this is usually much much um, less than saying your intensive production systems so it's not as costly for the farmer as say your intensive production system in the second bullet low production rate due to environment so meaning something can go wrong maybe it there's a flash flood or maybe it's too hot outside something happens so usually compared to your intensive production system the production is lower for extensive then your third bullet animals express natural behavior meaning they can do what they want when they want they can be normal animals and do what they're born to do and this usually means in parentheses there that they will have less stress so they will be happier and generally if they're still healthy they will produce everything they need to enough milk enough meat so on but yes usually there are less animals in your extensive production system and the last bullet there less labor intensive so meaning generally the animals are left alone less people watch over them maybe if you have one um, herder that just goes and checks on them every day to see whether they're all there but it's not so labor intensive then also this means that it will have less production costs so it costs the farmer less and lastly some examples this is like normal cattle sheep goat farming and the book and so on gives the example as the open karoo meaning where there's felt the animals are allowed to move it's not just in the Karoo where they farm cattle, sheep and goats. Sometimes it could be in the free state and so on, but it means open felt. So there's no housing really necess necessary for the animals. They're just outside in the felt. They're not brought inside during the nighttime. They're just left outside to do what they want. So there are some factors that can increase production in both these production systems for both intensive and extensive. The first one is nutrition. So usually a balanced diet through supplementary feeding, so extra feeding is needed to increase production. Again, for intensive, this is necessary, but for extensive, not necessarily needed, maybe a mineral lick or two. Then there's something new, feed conversion ratio, the FCR is very, very important. So what the feed conversion ratio measures is the amount of food consumed, and hopefully this will turn into weight or product in the animal. So meaning if the animal gets five kilograms of hay or concentrate to eat, you want all five kilogram to actually turn into in the animal, to stay in the animal and then turn into weight if you want it to gain weight or become product, meaning that will become, for argument's sake, five kilograms of milk if you wanted to produce milk. So you want your FCR ratio to be as low as possible, meaning everything gets converted into some kind of product or into weight which means meat, which is also a product. So usually they talk about the FCR value. There's no units for it, but if they give you say FCR and say it is one, that's very good compared to say FCR 10, because 10 is very, very high. You want it to be as low as possible, close to zero basically as possible, which means that all the feed or most of the feed is being turned into some kind of product inside the animal's body. Then thirdly also under nutrition, creep feeding usually as an example of this intensive feeding for young piglets. So usually it's used for intensive, intensive systems. So this is very good to also help the piglets grow quicker and so on. So usually, yes, again, just for intensive systems, they rarely do this for extensive. <laughs> Sorry, then secondly, uh, health and environment is also very important. This can either increase or decrease your production. So firstly, as we all know, healthy animals produce healthy offspring. So you want the animals to be as happy as possible and as healthy as possible so that they can reproduce and produce product. And secondly, very important, especially with the environment, temperature can increase or decrease production. So usually a high heat lowers production because mainly these animals are generally stressed out. 
because they feel heat or when they feel very hot and bothered, they start drinking a lot of water. So meaning they just have to drink water the whole time. If they don't have enough water, they can't produce anything, but generally just increases the stress. So nothing is produced or less things are produced. And secondly, cold weather is also bad for them because it makes animals produce body heat instead of products. So the animal is using all the feed it gets and turns it into body heat to keep itself, itself warm and no products are being produced. So that's very important to remember for the animal production. And third, thirdly, reproduction or breeding. Uh, this has to do, animals are usually selected for the quality of products. So meaning you want animals with the best wool, best or the most amount of eggs and the ones with the best meat or the most meat to reproduce. So usually with reproduction, animals are selected for these good qualities. And you want only those with the best qualities to produce more offspring because their offspring will have good quality products. Then usually crossbreeding is also done. So crossbreeding is when you've got different breeds. I'm gonna use here the example of cattle. We have got a Brangus and maybe, no, it's make it a Brahman and an Angus, which gives you a Brangus. So it's two different breeds. They mix together or one male from one breed and a female from a different breed to breed with one another and this increases hybrid vigor. So hybrid just literally means it's a mixture of two different breeds and the hybrid vigor refers to the fact that this animal now is going to be tougher genetically and physically against things like diseases. So it's going to have better disease resistance, it'll probably need less feed, generally uh, farmers want to go for this. Uh, they can handle heat better, um, or they can handle cold better. So the fact that usually you've got two different breeds creating an offspring means that the offspring now will be stronger and better than the both um, and the parents together, because it has half the amount of genes from the one parent and half from the other one. So crossbreeding generally is very good, and usually, um, except for your stud breeders usually farmers want to go for crossbreeding. So this means the offspring will be better um, and they will also produce better products for it. And fourthly, management. So management, usually this has to do with the farmer determining the mating season. So when you allow the animals to mate, to when you want them to, they say as cattle, to calf and have the offspring. If you want them to do this during winter and summer or maybe just during summer. So the farmer has to determine this. Then also the weaning time, are you going to wean your animals after six months, eight months, 12 months? So this will determine on, um, on how long the animal will take to produce certain products or how long it will take you, let's say cattle, before you can allow them, the new young animals, to reproduce for you as well. Then also selecting breeding stock. Again, same thing with the crossbreeding and so on or with the um, quality of products which females do you want to mate with which males? Then also, when does the animal need vaccinations? Is it at all needed? And then lastly, also the treatment of animals, meaning I think in this case, treatment refers here to how we're gonna handle the animals. Uh, allow them, are you going to allow them to have a lot of stress? Are they gonna be handled with care? Uh, are they gonna be chased every day? All this increases stress and so on. So this all has to do um, well, the, the, the type of examples have to do with management and management, managing your animals. Okay, so again, those four factors, nutrition, usually health and environment as technically two different um, um, ideas, but they kind of go together. The environment does determine the health of the animal. Thirdly, reproduction, and fourthly, management. Then just quickly, there are two subcategories of each of these production systems. So existence, uh, yeah, um, intensive farming, sorry, can be subdivided into subsystems and commercial as well as your extensive. So what this refers to, subsystems, means small scale, meaning you only forgot a couple of animals. Here's the example of two of pigs, two different farms with, with different pig amounts. So for subsistence, for number one here, uh, this person only has two pigs, whereas for the commercial purposes, as you can see again, they have these um, units for the pigs, where there is much, much more of these animals, because with commercial, you want to sell for a profit, but subsistence, you basically just want to farm enough for your family. So let's quickly compare these two together. This is the last slide. So with subsistence, you produce only enough food for a single family, 
So it's usually not to make a profit, unless maybe you want to sell one to buy a new one or something, but it's really not on a large scale, so for a small scale. Then secondly, low production rate, meaning there's not a lot of animals produced with low maintenance and cost. So this is usually better for the family. Then thirdly, management is extensive, meaning usually this is, again, uh, animals are allowed to walk around, so they've got more space, maybe na using natural felt. And then lastly, animal health could get neglected, unfortunately, because the animals aren't seen every day, less people, or meaning because it's labor, um, less labor intensive, so less people are monitoring the animals, so it's possible to miss if they um, become sick or they need treatment. And as um, of course, the animals are um, moving around the farmhouse and somebody in the house is able to actually monitor the animals. And secondly, commercial. Uh, again, this produce products to be sold for profit and a large scale. So there's usually a high production rate. And thirdly, management is intensive. So again, animals are being monitored. There's a lot of animals in this case. And fourthly, large business size. So usually this business yeah, is on a large scale and a lot of animals are being monitored and um, bred and so on. And they're kept usually inside a building. So like the battery chickens and so on. So they're kept and monitored every day. And then lastly, animal health is closely monitored. Again, the environment is controlled. Everything is controlled for these animals because the point of this is to make money for the business. Okay, that's it for this lesson.